It's time to talk about the big picture of the Orange County economy, government finances, where that's all going. The county executive is with us next on Meet the Leaders. Welcome to Meet the Leaders. I'm Kerry Donovan. We're here in Orange County. We've got lots to talk about with the still new county executive, first Absolutely. year, Steve Newhouse. Great having you. Good to program. see you. Let's do the quick, the quick one. Uh, Town of Chester supervisor for how many years? Uh, gee, six years. Six years, Town of Chester, and then ran for county exec. And this is a, a Orange County native, permanent resident. Absolutely. Mount St. Mary College. Uh, Marist snuck College over to Masters. Duchess for yeah. a master's you degree. Bet. But uh, Orange County is your home. It is my home, born and raised. And uh, my, it's funny, my daughter's going to kindergarten here. So it's kind of weird. Uh, today is my, tonight is my student uh, parent, parent thing where you got to go. Yeah. So I've never had to go to this. So my wife and I, you know, my wife had to call our office and schedule it to make sure I'm with your staff. So I'm bringing my <laughs> wife. We're going to this student thing uh, or the parent teacher thing. And then after that, we're going to an event. And I said, we got to stop. I got to read a proclamation. So well, you work it all in. I wrote up a nice bio, which included uh, um, service to the country with the Naval Reserves. Yeah. Thanks Still for in the Navy. Just had a uh, drill weekend last weekend. Appreciate your service there. I know everybody does. And then lastly, a young dad. Yeah, a young dad. <laughs> and you jumped right in on that I one. I got a two-month-old, a two-year-old, and a four-year-old at home. So they keep us busy. And they're in the, they stop by the office almost every day to see me to make sure we have family time. And uh, it's very. It, that's why I love this job. Uh, I am five minutes from my house. Um, I call Albany and Washington are really tough on the family. So... Uh, I call them family killers, and that's why I made a decision. I like public service, but I like to be home, and it worked out perfect, and the people of the county gave me this opportunity, and it's just a, a wonderful, wonderful responsibility. And, and here we go. Let's, let's start out with uh, Orange County Economy and your campaign, which was still going on a year ago yeah. from now. Uh, one of the things you came up with I thought was a great headline, and I enjoyed uh, figuring out the math. 1,000 jobs in 1,000 days, which works out to 33 months. Yeah. So I had to go online to get that. And Is that a real number? Well, real number, and we've surpassed that already. Uh, we're doing phenomenal. I mean, I, I spoke today in uh, Dutchess County with my colleague, Mark Molinaro, talking about uh, the first thing I started was honoring John Dean Rosa, who just left from the Chamber of Commerce. There, if there's one thing you can say about Orange County, a wonderful place to live, so on and so forth, its economy is doing well. We are growing. Uh, every day is a different, exciting opportunity coming to Orange County. Toro College, which just opened its doors this fall to new students, that alone has opened the doors for so many opportunities. And you and I are going to be talking about this every time I come in there, a new door that will opening just because of the Toro instance. Uh, instance. So you talk about other things from and, each and just to jump in there at, at the former hospital site yeah. so you've got a, a neighborhood in middletown that could have had a big empty mothballed building sitting in it a and instead you've got a college a year ago i was training there with the county swat team in an empty building to try to look at what an example is if they had to do a response to a building like that now a year later you have 130 plus college students go, uh, getting their uh, osteopathic uh, medical degree. Uh, it just, you can't ask for that, anything better than that, uh, except growth there. And I'll give you a little bit of a taste. I think in the next month or so, we'll be uh, talking about the next steps of growing there. We're in active negotiations to bring our medical examiner's office there, where we can have students studying forensics, at the same time getting a brand new facility. Our facility is way, um, uh, under service to what it should be. We do over 300 autopsies a year, some criminal in, in mind, so they're very sensitive. So these marriages that are being made there are gonna be, are, are great. Uh, you also have to talk about the other side of county, Newburgh, Crystal Run Healthcare, under construction now, over 200 jobs uh, next year in 2015, 50 of which are MDs, the rest are all different healthcare you know, uh, family, so like LPNs, RNs, jobs that you and I would love to have our daughters and sons to be in. Absolutely. So there's real jobs and, there. And with Crystal Run for years, uh, living in Newburgh, it was, yep. gee, we wish they'd <laughs> come on over. Absolutely. And, uh, and we have Coach USA, yep. which is close to my heart in Chester. The, the uh, bus company has opened up. They were under construction under my watch in Chester. Uh, over 200 employees now met with their CEO last week. They're going to be growing, offering more services here. 
They're excited. We're going to talk later on about the casinos. They're talking about marrying the uh, people from New York City, from the five boroughs, in a service route that will be growing to the casinos, which will do nothing but benefit the whole area. Absolutely. The, the other thing, uh, let's, let's throw this in as well, um, Greek beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, German beer made by a Greek company in yeah. Goshen. Come on. That's, Kicker uh, Frosch. Uh, those guys, are uh, they're one of my babies, too. They were coming to Chester first, it, and Site B was Goshen. Goshen had the water they needed. They're going to be starting. But even one other thing close to your home, United Angry Orchard. Have you heard about this? Angry Orchard Beer Company, which is owned by a Boston Brewing, which I think owns Sam Adams, Sam is going to be bringing Sam it. Sam Adams Hard Cider. Yeah. Line. So, I mean, that's Here coming come. to the Chris Farm uh, in Montgomery, which I think is good. Jeff Chris, the owner of the farm, is a friend of mine. And, you know, farmers are having a hard time keeping up with things here. And the economy has not been uh, very rewarding. They're, they have a lot of restrictions. And, the, you know, one bad storm can ruin their year. You talk to the young uh, growers here in, in Pine Island as well. So I was very pleased to hear that they uh, are going to keep it as a farm and it's going to be an R&D facility and a tasting place. So I think that's cool. I'm excited about it. And um, hard cider, yeah, not, not just Warwick alone. I mean, they make a great product. There are other hard ciders being made here in the county now Absolutely. on a, a craft farm farm cidery absolutely farm cidery basis now you bring in the sam adams guys and you got the uh, black dirt bourbon being pr uh, produced here in warwick too so it's nice these are all great things i mean i grow i, I raise honeybees myself i'm going to be harvesting honey next week these are all um beautiful uh niche uh, niches that you want to call it uh that make this hudson valley such a great attraction for people to live here or just to visit and stuff so uh, I couldn't be more excited about the things. The beer industry is growing. It's not just there. Newburgh Brewing Company is growing. We have two potential big brewing companies, uh, national names that are looking at uh, sites here in Orange County as well right now. For some reason, we have the perfect, uh, uh, you know, science for them to come here. And uh, we've, we had meetings on it two nights ago to bring a big company here from, uh, from the national level. And you've got to stop right there right I now. Will, I will. I'm will. just, you know. That's okay. Yeah. And, and I know viewers are doing the same thing, like, oh, come on, Mr. Yeah. Newhouse. What, and I, think the, I think saying okay. the, um, the yeah. Angry Orchard is a name brand that that's enough. We gave them a little bit of a flavor. Uh, and we, look, we got exciting stuff. In two months from now, I believe, you and I are going to be talking about which two casinos are going to be under construction in the Hudson Valley. That'll be enough to talk about. That'll be a half hour right there. Absolutely. And let's do that. Let's, uh, I want to touch on county finances because okay. you're in your budget cycle. We're going to get to that, and we yep. want to talk certainly casinos. We're going to do that right after a break. Don't go away. Meet the leaders with County Executive Steve Newhouse. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Meet the Leaders. I'm Kerry Donovan. So glad you're here. We're talking with Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse. Let's move on and talk about uh, county budget and finances. Uh, th there are concerns that the county's checkbook is pretty thin these days in terms of uh, a fund that would normally be there to cover emergencies. Uh, we have technical names for that. Also concerns about tax revenue and where the budget goes next. You've also got some expenses that are still a going up. So absolutely. Where are we? Uh, you know, uh, this job is a great job, a lot of responsibility. And when I came in here, the county was literally spending here, uh, but only bringing this much in in revenues. So over the last three years in particular, the budgets were not balanced. They were, uh, you know, at the end of the year, in particular last year, we ended up in the red. We were scheduled to end up in the red. We've done an early retirement incentive that we've had over 107 people already apply for, where people thought we wouldn't get a dozen. Uh, that'll help us close the gap and end this year in the black. So uh, what does that mean for balancing the budget for two 2015? I'm going to be presenting my budget on October 1st at a series of events. I'm doing some unorthodox um, presentations, not only to the legislature, but to the supervisors and mayors, to the public, to the business community, the partnership, the chamber. So I'm taking my show on the road. It's not going to be one presentation. In addition, I'm going to present my budget on YouTube so the public can see it at their leisure. So what I need to do, what my, my, my philosophy is, uh, Carrie, is to cut back spending to something that's more palatable with the revenues that are coming in. Absolutely. Right. Uh, I don't plan on clobbering the taxpayers with a massive tax hike. I vowed the, to the legislature that I would veto that. I will not uh, do deficit financing, which is borrowing on tomorrow's generation with today's bills. I vowed to 
uh, veto that if that was ever proposed. So really it comes down to making difficult uh, cuts. The same cuts that every business made, every household has made since 2008, even towns. When I was a supervisor in Chester, I know all my other neighboring supervisors and mayors have made difficult decisions over the years and Orange County is gonna have to tighten the belt up. Uh, we'll get through it, it's gonna be difficult, but it will put us in a better place financially and uh, the taxpayers will also appreciate it as well. One of your expenses has been the Valley View County yeah. home for uh, the nursing home. It's, it's a fine facility, great place, yeah. very expensive to operate. Uh, right now that's before the it's LD. Actually, it's actually going to be voted on by the legislature. Last night the legislature voted to put it to the final, uh, to the entire body and that'll be voted on in the next few months. Uh, every other county, most of them in our area, in particular Rockland just closed on selling theirs this year. Mm -hmm. Last year uh, Ulster did theirs very successfully. And uh, even the bidders that we're looking at buying our uh, Valley View right now have a higher standard of care. So if we care most about the people that are being uh, cared for in Valley View right now, you would want to sell it to somebody that has the resources to make it a better facility, a higher standard of care to the New York State Department of Health, better uh, you know, amenities that, uh, that you, don't, you can't really justify on a public budget. So, uh, and I believe that the, the people that work there will, will be offered their jobs to stay there. So it's really a win-win. We need to get out of the business that other private sector industries are doing. There's nine private nursing homes in Orange County that don't receive $1 of Orange County property tax. Why should we subsidize another one? So it's a difficult emotional decision. I think the message was, um, was fuzzy and confused when it came out three years ago. I'm doing it in a more respectable way. You mentioned the LDC, which brings a group of independent men and women to shepherd the process. And that's what you see now. We have a, uh, offers between 25 and 30 million. All of them have a better standard of care. And uh, most of them, if not all of them, say they're going to keep the employees that work there. So how do you say no? And you've got a separate group that's going to manage the process. Absolutely. So it's not the legislature, it's not Me. the county executive, it's not, it's, it's off. Absolutely. Get some pros, let them do it. And, and you right. know what, Carrie, I represent, I'm 40 years old. I represent the young generation of uh, the Northeast. But if you look at every age group, they are not leaving New York, they're running from New York. And they're running because of high taxes. So for instance, if you pay 12,000 a year in property taxes and you're gonna retire this year, why would you stay here if you have to pay $1,000 a month of your retirement that you worked hard for just for taxes? When you can go down south and uh, get a break uh, where they're less than $1,000 for an equal. Pennsylvania's pretty close. Absolutely, every, a lot, we have a lot of people that move to Pike County across the board. Absolutely, because they're so, your, Retirement income is in tax on income Absolutely. tax, and your property taxes are a tenth. Absolutely. A fifth. And that's what I'm focused on. Yeah. And, and uh, it's just trying, it starts here. It's not just school tax, it's everybody needs to tighten their belts and get more palatable. Fair enough. Now, the County of Orange has um, a number of other institutions and entities. Um, how, how far do we take privatization at the county level? Um, I don't know. You, I, you take it as far as you can. Um, I think that uh, what I, my plan is to reshuffle and reshape Orange County government and get back to the basics of government. So public works, public safety, um, public education, and public health. Uh, and when you have, talk about public health, you talk about social services and you're talking about parks. Um, but do we need to be in the nursing business? Uh, do we need to be in the uh, home nursing business, the nursing home business, all these different um, places that there's a, a, a lucrative private sector uh, groups all over the county. Why am I competing with them? And if you look at our numbers compared to the private sector, you, you can't compare it. And at the end of the day, uh, I have the taxpayers to report to, and that's who's on my mind when I go through here and look at things. But uh, public works, you, you, have to, you have to look at this. If you have a small pie and that's what you're taking the money from, all these other entities are suffering. Uh, emergency services get cut because you have to fund things that we shouldn't be in business for. Roads that were scheduled to be fixed this year, they might cut back on because you only have a certain amount of money and you have to keep all these things happy. If you keep this tight, you get to focus on the real core and that's what really the, the values of what government should be there for. Your roads, your bridges, your police, your 911 dispatchers, your social services to help the people that really need a handout. Uh, that need a hand up, you know, uh, and, and get them to where they need to be. We've been prosecuting uh, welfare fraud like never before. Our numbers are really earth shattering. And uh, our parks are really something that we value. Uh, so we're gonna continue to keep growing them as well.
Let's talk about the, the other huge issue that, that's in the hopper right now because the siting board will have some kind of information for us coming up. But let's start, uh, let's pick up on, on casinos. We have six proposals now yeah. for the County of Orange. Uh, you've been uh, since day one saying, let's come on, it. let's go. Yeah, well, there's nine proposed in our region, one in Ulster, two in Sullivan, six in Orange, as you said. And Orange, as uh, per the New York State uh, Department of Budget, which is with the governor's office, said we have the ability to have the most profits, the highest profits, uh, the most jobs, uh, the sustainability. New York City could get a, a, a casino in five to seven years, uh, in about seven to eight years. Right. What sustainability do we have if we're trying to take 80% of our profits from an Orange County casino or a Sullivan casino or Ulster from New York City? What happens when they get one? So really one of the big benefits, and we've talked about this in the past, Woodbury Commons bring in 13 million people a year. So you already have a f feedstock of people coming. In addition to that, our proximity to New York City. We're still less than an hour or just about an hour away from, this, from New York City. You start going up into the Catskills, it takes you a little bit further. Uh, so it compares to Atlantic City, which is about two hours roughly from the five boroughs. So all these things have made Orange County marketable. And it's not just me talking, the biggest people in the industry are in Orange County, Genting, Caesars, Penn, Cordish, uh, Saratoga. The big people in this industry are not fools. They've done the studies. And I think that uh, if the process is fair, Orange County gets one. And I believe Sullivan will probably get one too. And uh, there's ways of making these things work. And uh, I'm excited. As the guy that's saying Orange County is open for business, uh, I have a duty to, uh, to be open for business. The uh, host communities of all the towns have voted. You were a town yeah. supervisor. So the towns are all, give or take, there's much more to work to be done. But right. if it's Tuxedo, if it's Montgomery, if it's town of Newburgh, if it's New Windsor, there looks like it's going to go. Every place that was proposed in Orange County was passed by their local boards. Right. And uh, that's what's so exciting about this because you get through this budget process. That's what's on my mind now. And now I look forecasting in the future. In January, you and I can, you know, can talk about which two casinos are going to be under construction. That's exciting. These are big facilities, 250,000 square foot, thousands of jobs. Uh, they will reshape our area. So we need to be careful on the impacts from them, traffic and mental health and, and also um, law enforcement. But we've already been on our game with it. We're going to make sure that all these things are identified, not only in the process now, but as they get built. Uh, so it's exciting. It's an exciting time for this region, and it's exciting to be the county executive. Great stuff going, going on right now. And as you pointed out with the casino companies, the, the bigs are in Orange County. Yes. I mean, uh, Genting is, what, the world's biggest casino company? Biggest. They own uh, Norwegian Here Cruise Lines. <laughs> Caesars is a, a second one. on the side. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, they've really, all these companies have gone out into the field and had job fairs and are already lined up because this... This construction timeline by law is so tight, Carrie. It's 24 months when they're selected. Yeah. So they're like, congratulations, you got your thing. We'll see you in two years. You better be open. The door's got to yeah. be open. Two, two, two years we're walking through the door. Yes, it's got to be there. Absolutely. So. Which, which also puts uh, a, a, an additional a construction pile of cash in because they're going to be going around the clock. Absolutely. I've cash. talked to the iron workers, for example, to show you how hot this region is. It's the first time, and I think you might have heard me say this before, that we're taking workers from New York City that want to come up here and work that, that anybody can remember. So right now, they say our iron workers, the union in our area, say that they're booked up for the next four or five years out. That's a good sign. Uh, so uh, I think the public and private sector are going to see nothing but growth in the next years to come. And I'm there to help shepherd through and welcome companies that uh, meet the local requirements. and. Uh, it's all good stuff, in my opinion. Here we go. We're talking with uh, Steve Newhouse, Orange County Executive. We're going to continue on some health issues. Great. Opiate addiction and other problems that the county is dealing with, and we'll talk about those next. Stay with us. Welcome back to Meet the Leaders. I'm Kerry Donovan with Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse. And we were chatting here during the break. Uh, Orange County, like all the counties across this part of the state, we have a serious opiate addiction problem. Heroin's all over the place. It's not, 
kids in bad neighborhoods or young people. It's it's Everybody. suburban. It's upper class. It's all over the place. Yeah. And I know the county. I know the district attorney has taken this up, as have you, to try and say, what are we going to do about it? Yeah, we've kind of teamed up together uh, like no other time in history. You have the district attorney, myself, the Department of Health, Mental Health, everybody working together uh, to get the word out because we don't want to just, he doesn't want to incarcerate these people. We want to get people care. We want to get them off this. And uh, really, I say this a lot, that the only silver lining in the death of Phil Philip Seymour Hoffman was it brought the awareness of heroin addiction. And it's killing people all over from Warwick to Newburgh, uh, to Port Jervis, Walk Hill, there is no um, social stature that is excluded. Um, and uh, it's, it's really been an epidemic. So uh, we've really put an awareness level like never before. And uh, my message to people is we have help out there available. Do not give up. If somebody's been to rehab and came out and got back on it again, don't give up. Because the prognosis long term for that individual that's addicted is not good. And if it's one of your loved ones or your friends, uh, you don't want that hanging on you. And uh, I tell everybody uh, uh, to, to get us, call us, call my office, call mental health office, call the DA's office. I have somebody that's a, a substance abuser. How can I get them to help before they meet the inc incarceration or ultimately have an old overdose problem? Uh, we have uh, really uh, put the Narcam uh, system into the field. It's saving people almost on a weekly basis. Uh, and I'm happy about that. Uh, so we're doing everything we can, but really the most important thing we can do is you and I talking about this right now, awareness. Absolutely. You recently, uh, speaking of county health services, yes. I mean, this is just one challenge for the, the county's health infrastructure. You've also uh, uh, you had a recent symposium in Newburgh, a quick get together with all the health departments. What was, what was the purpose it, of that it, one? It was great. We had all the health providers in the county, all the hospitals, and uh, what we did is we, uh, so, so many businesses are confused or being impacted negatively by the Affordable Care Act, maybe because they misunderstand it, maybe because of the impacts from it. So that was one part of it. We want to start getting awareness and shepherd people through that process, how it works. I know a big business in Orange County that was having people go from full-time to part-time because they didn't want to be impacted by it. So we want to be able to help them. The second thing was to spread that awareness for um, the opiate addictions. Uh, so it was a successful uh, first time that we've done a health care symposium. We're going to continue to do more. Some will be targeted on certain areas of the, uh, of the uh, health industry. But uh, it was very successful. Uh, we tried to keep it nice and contents. It was about three, three hours, four hours max. Hit some of the highlights. Um, got some contact information. And now we're out in the field working on things. Uh, but again, this NARCAM uh, system that we've been pushing in, out into the public has been helping. Law enforcement has adopted it. Uh, our social service workers are adopting it. They're literally saving people's lives. And it comes down to that awareness. And uh, we want companies to continue to employ people and offer them health care benefits and not go back to part time because of uh, uh, a government regulation. So we're trying to help mitigate that. And I suppose for, for a number of business folks, maybe the, the county of Orange isn't the first place they think of to get help on that. Absolutely not. They don't. They think that they have to call their doctor or they might not be covered. Uh, so we can help them shepherd through. There's so much opportunity out there and there's so much help out there to help you get through the process that all you got to do is ask. It's just like everything in life, whether you got a job or you want to get a date, you got to ask. If you don't ask, you don't have the opportunity to get. It's your first step. <laughs> all righty. Um, when you take your uh, budget presentation on the road, um, it's going to be online as well. You're going to do it on YouTube. Absolutely. Is that, Absolutely. That's, that's different. Taking it to the people. I'm doing uh, all sorts of stuff. Uh, teletown halls. I'm a big uh, proponent of teletown halls. I did it during the campaign. Hey, mm -hmm. call everybody's house, same time. Hey, it's your candidate for county executive. Tell me what's on your mind. Pick and people phone. will ask you stuff that's... Uh, from stem to stern, but that's the important thing and that's the most tangible thing and the most effective way of campaigning is reaching out and shaking people's hands, being able to talk to them, communicate, hear what's on their mind. There you go. County Executive Steve Newhouse, thanks for being on the program. Well, thank we'll you. We'll have you back again real soon. Meet the leaders, thank you for looking in. Stay tuned for more great local programming right here on Optimum.